Hello, this is Dr. Ron Dalton Jr. and in today's video we're going to be talking about what the difference is between the different types of spinal disc conditions. So those conditions would be a bulging disc, herniated disc, ruptured disc, and degenerative disc disease which is also commonly referred to as DDD. Now before we get into that I want to first talk a little bit about what a normal disc looks like because we're going to want to compare this to the different conditions so that you can see the difference. If you look at this image here that I have up on the screen right now what we're looking at is a normal healthy disc and a normal spine. So let's look over at the image on the left here first. Basically what happens with your spine is that it's put together in this way. You've got the bones or the vertebrae that are stacked on top of each other and between each set of bones is a disc. And the disc is really important because what it does is it acts as a cushion um, between the bones and that's its main function. So anytime that you have a shock that's applied to your spine, the discs are supposed to absorb that shock and what that does is it prevents the bones from being damaged and it also prevents the bones from rubbing together and causing you pain. Now if you look over here at the image on the right, this uh, circular thing here, this is the disc itself and this is what a normal disc looks like. And what you can see is that on the outside you've got this strong outer covering which we call the annulus fibrosus and then in the center there's a jelly-like center and it's called the nucleus pulposus. Now I want to talk just a second about the nucleus because this is going to be important when we talk about degenerative disc disease. Um, the, the nucleus is actually, it has a high water content, but also what it does is it stores oxygen and nutrients, so that way if the disc is ever injured, those are there in order for it to heal properly. One of the biggest problems with any type of a disc condition is that it takes a very long time to heal, and if you're living with one of these problems, you know that that's the case. But the reason for that is because the discs of your spine actually do not receive a very good blood supply. And normally, whenever you have an injury, your body depends on good blood flow to bring fresh oxygen and nutrients to the injured area so that it can heal quickly. And the disc doesn't get that. So what the disc depends on is the oxygen and nutrients that are within the nucleus in order for it to continue healing. Now we'll start with a bulging disc because essentially these conditions are all the same exact problem but they're different stages of the problem. So the first stage is what we call a bulging disc and if you look at the picture over here on the right we're going to focus right back in this area here because what's going to happen here is that in the case of a bulging disc you'll notice that the disc gets damaged and that happens for a number of different reasons but essentially the disc gets injured and as the outer wall starts to get damaged the um, it will get weaker and it will start to bulge and as it does that the nucleus will start to push into the injured area. So if we continue to see what happens here you'll notice that the disc continues to bulge and the nerves of your spine are exiting right behind where the disc is so a lot of times what will happen is that the disc will start to put pressure on the nerves and that's what causes all the pain and all the symptoms that you'll uh, experience when you have one of these conditions. Now the key difference between a bulging disc and all the other problems that we're going to talk about is that the wall of the disc doesn't actually tear completely through. It bulges and it's damaged, however it doesn't rip completely through. The next condition that we'll talk about is a herniated disc and if we go back here, uh, we'll go back to normal here, the biggest difference between a herniated disc and a bulging disc is that now the wall actually starts to tear through. So if we look at the picture again, what you'll notice is that now we've got a tear in the wall and as that tear continues to get worse the nucleus is going to start to push through that tear and eventually it's actually going to tear the outside of the wall and at this stage we would call this a herniated disc so the big, biggest difference here is that the bulging disc the wall stays intact with the herniated disc the wall actually tears and that's the biggest difference now if this continues to get worse, eventually what's going to happen is that the, the nucleus is going to push completely outside of the disc and once the nuclear tissue starts to actually exit the disc, we call this a ruptured disc. And what that means of course is that the um, not only is the wall torn, but now the fluid is starting to leak out and that's what we would call a ruptured disc. And another name that we would use to refer to that is a sequestered disc. So that's basically what that means. The final thing that we want to talk about is degenerative disc disease. Now degenerative disc disease is actually a different type of condition 
And what's happening is that usually due to either old injuries to the disc or wear and tear on your spine over a long period of time, you're going to start to lose the water content within the nucleus. And of course we say that that means that it's getting dehydrated. So once the fluid starts to disappear and once you start to get a disc that's dehydrating, if we look at the picture over on the left here and, and focus on this disc that I'm pointing to, what's going to happen is that the disc is going to start to get shorter. It's going to start to flatten. Now remember in the picture on the right I was showing you how with the bulging disc and the herniated disc and all that, it puts pressure on the nerve so that you start to have symptoms. Well, a degenerated disc is going to do the same thing, except if you look at the picture on the left again, this opening here between the bones, that's where the nerve is exiting. And as the disc gets flatter and flatter, that opening is going to compress. It's going to close down and apply pressure to the nerve. It's just applying pressure in a different direction. But essentially what's going to happen is that with all of these conditions, the symptoms are going to be very, very similar because the bottom line is they're putting pressure on that nerve and whatever that nerve controls is what's going to be affected and that's how your symptoms are going to develop with these conditions. Now if you're looking at this video and you want to learn more, so for example if you want to learn what causes these conditions or the symptoms that are related to it, the treatments that are available, all of that sort of information, I've created a website for you and it's healyourbulgingdisc.com and I'll have a link to this in the description of the video that you're watching. You just scroll down underneath the video and you'll see that there's a description there and you can just click on that link and go directly to the website but it's going to take you to this page and you can read through this. I, you know, I have got some funny things on here just to kind of get your attention and to um, give you an example of what I think is happening with the problem here but as you continue to scroll down on this page, you'll get to this point where you can choose the condition that you want to learn about. And all you need to do is click on one of those links. It'll take you to a different page where I'll explain more about what the condition is. And then if you scroll down to the bottom of the page that you're on, you'll see that I have a table of contents here. And this will give you all of the information. So if you wanted to learn about the symptoms, you would just come down here and click on one of these, and it'll give you a complete list of symptoms that could develop. I cover the causes, the treatments. We talk about all of the different medications that might be prescribed for the condition, uh, natural alternatives that you may want to consider, exercises, surgery. So all of this is, is considered on this website, and I write a lot of detail about these different topics so that you can learn whatever it is that you're looking to learn from this. All right, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you found it helpful, and I hope you have a great day.